welcome to the second leg of our European tour. Uh, currently sat at stand 10 at Edinburgh Airport and we're on a short flight, 1 hour 50 to Keflavik. Uh, we are on Vatsib, we're going to give Vatsib a go. Uh, this is a night flight, we did land in Edinburgh just a short while ago on our uh, first leg of our European tour. So if you're just joining us, welcome. Now, let's get this started. We're in the Phoenix A320, so let's get batteries and a bit of ground power on so we can see what we're doing. There we go, let's get the dome lights, there we go. So, as with all the A320s, let's make sure all the white lights are turned off. I'll start the APU up, I'll turn the beacons on. Smoking signs, doors armed, are okay. Let's go top left. We're going to start the ideas. So, number one first, number two, and then the middle one is number three. It's not the order you might think, it's not left to right. So, excuse that coming up at the bottom there. Uh, I'm just going to turn the brightness on this. Let's put that up to the middle, and let's start the APU. Okay. Let's go into the flight bag. And I'll talk you through what we're going to be doing today. Uh, sure, hop. Let's just import our flight plan, which we've got in Simbri, which should start coming through now. And it is. Let me. There we go. Just come in now. If we take you to. Sim brief. There you go. There's our uh, flight plan with Sim brief. We're on the Gossam One Delta departure today, and arriving on the Basley Three Mike arrival, and it will be an ILS approach into runway 10 at Keflavik, uh, departing runway six at Edinburgh. Uh, let's just have a quick look. So Edinburgh, as you can see, is online. Oops. There we go. So we'll tune into the ATIS in a minute. One three one decimal three five zero, and ground is also on. So let's go back to. Let's go back in here. I'm just going to tune very quickly the radios. Let's just have a listen in. So one three one decimal three five zero. While we're listening to the ATIS, what I will do, I hope you can hear the ATIS when I do this, I'll tune in. Uh, you won't hear that. You won't be hearing that. It's just dawned on me. Bear with me just 30 seconds. What I'm going to do is just change the settings quickly. So the audio output device. Oh, let's get through the speakers. Let's hope that works. Try that again. So hopefully you can hear it this time. Edinburgh Information Echo. Time 1650 Zulu. Runway in use 06. Transition level flight level 70. Surface wind 040 degrees 6 knots. Cab OK. Temperature plus 12. Dew point plus 10. QNH 1014. Acknowledge receipt of information echo. And Advise aircraft type on first contact. Edinburgh information to go. Time 1650 Zulu. Runway in use 06. Transition level flight level 70. Surface wind 040 degrees 6 knots. Cab OK. Temperature plus 12. Dew point plus 10. QNH 1014. Acknowledge receipt of information echo and advise aircraft type on. Okay, so that's the uh, ATIS from Edinburgh. Uh, transition altitude, flight level 070, so that's 7,000 feet as we know. Wind 040 degrees at 6 knots with temperature of 12 plus 12, dew point of plus 10, and QNH 1014. All information we're going to need. I am just going to tune ground very quickly. Um, 
which is uh, 121.750. Let me just get on ground. And we'll just listen in as we go ahead and start our planning. So, onto the MCDU, click out to AOC menu, flight in it because we want to initiate the flight, and then we're just going to make our request to sim brief, and it should pull all of the information in here. It takes a little bit of time. There you go. Speedbird 74 Bravo, Echo Golf Papa Hotel, which is Edinburgh, Bravo India Kilo Foxtrot, which is Keflavik. Alternative buyer, uh, I think is rectific, but I need to check. And one hour, 51 minutes. So let's go to our init page and init request. Again, it won't fill cost index, flight number, etc. And we're going to have to do that ourselves, which isn't a problem. So uh, let's have a look. Speedbird 74 Bravo. Cost index of this flight is 05, and again, you get that from your flight planning 05. And our cruise altitude today is interesting, it's flight level 240. That'll let it work out how itself. Right, I'm going to go to the um, flight blag. Now, we do have GSX installed on here, but I'm, for this, I'm actually just going to use. Oops. I'm just going to use the fly pack. So I'm going to load the aircraft and we're going to say nine minutes. That will start to load. Mind zero five. Would you at gate 24? Thank you for the patient and help, help today. Bye. Uh, About the nine zero five. Thanks. Fine. Have a good night. Let somebody go in. And say goodbye. Okay. Uh, Echo Golf Papa Hotel, let's click that, let's go departure, we're on runway, I'm just going to double check that we are still on runway 06, yeah, runway 06 is the one in use, now, do 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 do, Gossam 1 Delta, Gossam 1 Delta, select, insert, let's go here, now, our arrival, we are on the ILS 10, but I we just need to check this on our flight plan in a second. Is the Basel 3 mic just going to come in here? Whoops. Right, I just want to check the plan and just make sure it's going to make sense because when I had a look earlier, I was slightly concerned. You can see it. You see it changing up here. I was slightly concerned that we would be going a long way round for a roundabout, but we're not. So that's absolutely fine. Brilliant. Okay. What what we'll do on the way? We'll have a look at our um, our planning uh, and the Navigraph charts. We'll do that close to the time. Let's just turn up the light on here. Give us something, some light, so we don't get trouble on the way and uh, let's turn so slight confession I haven't been on Vatsim for a very very long time um, and I can't say I'm looking forward to this we'll see how it goes I'm hoping we haven't got anything in no, we haven't. That's okay. I'm just checking uh, Keflavik just to make sure. So it is only ground. Um, so we've just got to, in a second, ask for our permissions, which I shall do in a second. So we're talking to who? We're talking to Edinburgh Ground here. So it's Edinburgh Ground. It's Speedbird 74 Bravo. So we're letting them know who we are. We are currently at stand 10A, as you can see there. Oh, did the APU start kicking in? Yep, APU's on, so we'll be able to get rid of the uh, in a second. So we're at stand 10A. We're an A320. So you've got to, the, the 80s told us that we had to let them know what aircraft type we were. 
Now, information at this moment in time is Echo, but we just need to keep uh, an ear out because it may change. It's been Echo for a little, little while yet, but again, let's just wait and see. Uh, Edinburgh and Emirates uh, 5 7, we'll take back, please. Emirates 5 7, is approved, face north. Push that blue face north, Emirates 5 7. Okay, interesting. Q&H 1014, and let's change that on here, 1014, now our cruise altitude today is 2000, uh, 24,000 feet or flight level 240, so we'll just put that in here ready, it will obviously change, um, we'll have to go by whether or not we get uh, any instructions from ATC. So, what are we going to do? So, I'm just making a few notes. So, Keflavik uh, has filed. Okay. Now, what I'm hoping we're going to get back is cleared by the GOSAM 1 Delta departure and a squawk number, which we were then programming. So, here we go. Edinburgh Ground, Speedbird 74 Bravo, at stand 10A, L, uh, type A320, with information echo, Q&H 1014, requesting IFR clearance to Keflavik as filed, please. Speedbird 74 Bravo, I don't have a flight plan, can you please refile? Edinburgh Ground, uh, Speedbird 74 Bravo, yeah, I'll refile now. flight plan wasn't filed it was just completed that's fine should be there now just give him a minute and then we'll uh, we'll talk to him again Edinburgh Ground, Speedbird 74 Bravo, Stand 10A, A320, Information Echo, QNH1014, requesting the IFR clearance to Keflavik as filed, should be with you now. Speedbird 74 Bravo, you're cleared to Keflavik, uh, I can never say that properly, only goes on one Delta departure, talking 2076. Uh, Edinburgh Grand Speed of 74 Bravo cleared to Keflavik on the Gossam 1 Delta departure, Squawk 27, uh, 2076. Speedbird 74 Bravo, read back is correct, uh, QNH 1014. Okay. So, 2076. 2076. So in a minute we can request a push and start. The Q and H has now changed. Oh, 1014. 1014. Let's go back in here. Oops. Oh, 1014. Okay. Interesting. I'm just going to go back up here. I should now be able to turn that off because we've got. Let's put our strobe on. Nav light. Put the other lights on in a second. Okay, loading aircraft. It looks like we're almost fully boarded here. Just got a few more to go. So while we wait, let's just go in our initial, initial page. So zero fuel weight, I've got that, so I can put that in. Zero fuel weight is 58.9 tonnes. 58.9. Forward slash, and we'll, we'll add that later. Our block fuel is 7.9, so let's go for 8.0. Just because we can. 
and then performance page okay so performance page back into okay before we do that 31.0 is the zero fuel weight center of gravity let's go and sort that 31.0 uh, page forward slash 31.0 there we go underground uh you can uh i sorry Interesting. Bit of feedback there. Anyway, no, I'm not going to worry about that. Somebody else's problem. Emirates 57, taxi to the point Alpha 1, yeah, Echo and Alpha. Here we go. Taxi Alpha 1, Echo and Alpha, Emirates 57. So, departure performance page. Now, runway 06, it's dry. We're going for flaps 2, everything off. Sync with the final load sheet, done. Sync the weather, done. And it is 1014. Let's calculate. And what we should then see is flaps to down 0 0.1. Flex temp 63, 1110. Engine out. V speeds 141, 141, and 144. Now we know the transition altitude is 7000 feet, so that's not a problem that it's not there. Let's go back into the MCDU actually put 6,000 but it is 7,000 feet and we got that from the ATIS transition altitude transition level flight level 70 so I'm going to just change that uh, V1 so 141 141 for rotate and 144 144 flaps Two forward slash down zero point one flex to temp is sixty three and Simbrief hasn't done a bad job of that at all because it's actually got everything right in there. So Edward Grand apologies, uh Ryan one zero three one uh currently on Fox Shot One. Who? Ryan Air one zero three one taxi stand one via Fox Shot One Echo. Fox Echo, apologies, I ran out. One, two, three, one, thank you. Ooh, okay. Emirates 57, no further ATC available. Monitor unit coming 123 S48 and have your flight. 1228, Emirates 57, thanks for ATC, have a good evening, say bye bye. Okay, let's connect the tug. Turn off the GPU. Okay, now I think we're done. We'll find out in a second. We'll be setting her up. Okay, so uh, we've got to now ask permission for push and start. Adam McGrand, Speedbird 74 Bravo, requesting push and start, please. Speedbird 74 Bravo, push and start approved, face west. Uh, push and start approved, face west, Speedbird 74 Bravo. Okay, so let's get the APU bleed on. Let's get strobes on. Now I know, if I come around here, the west is that way, so I've got to face that way. So,
so Edinburgh is now closing. So one two two decimal eight. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, one two two decimal eight. So let's go up the top, let's get these lights turned on. Uh, ready to go. So what we can do is think turn off the engine start now we've had a good engine start let's arm the spoilers flaps two speed brake max okay I think we're almost ready to taxi parking brake applied APU bleed landing like uh, okay let's get rid of the APU bleed don't need that don't need that we're away okay I think we're off so we're going to go Foxtrot. If I just quickly show you Navigraph, we're going to go down Foxtrot, right onto Echo, left onto Alpha, right the way down to runway 06. So, let's go back to our flight. Here we go. So, we'll let what we will do is we'll just have a quick look around, let everybody know what we're planning. Head of a traffic, Speedbird 74 Bravo, taxi in Foxtrot, Echo Alpha to run my 06. And here we go. So we're just going to take this short taxi down, uh, just keeping out look out because we have got traffic inbound as you can probably see in front of us it's quite busy tonight um, yeah I'm not quite sure why I don't have a traffic close so soon unless it's been on for a while maybe so just make sure there's nothing to the left and what we're going to do And the traffic, uh, Emirates 57, line of 06. Okay. Well, you hadn't, had you? He's telling Porkies he'd not landed. Look, he's just landing now. But never mind. I'm not sure that is an Emirates there, though, to be fair. I think it's probably a, it's an easy jet. Yeah, it's just not modelled it. Test, we're okay, good to go. Right, let's rock and roll. Head of traffic, EZ, England Alpha, final 06. Okay. Nice I think you go around, there is uh, two aircraft on the runway, one uh, line up uh, for the push and um, get the bus grid on the EZ. Interesting. I think that was a go around. There's another one coming up here, look, so we'll just take a steady, steady taxi there, we're not in a hurry. And the traffic camera is 5, 7, taking off 06. Yeah, looking good. So as we go, what we'll do is I'll show you the departures um, on Navigraph and let you see see the charts that we're using today. And remember, this is flight number two of our around Europe flight. Um, hoping to visit every European country in the A320, Phoenix A320. So this is leg two. We did. Um, from England into Scotland earlier today as a live we're now doing Scotland to Iceland 
and if you've got any ideas of where you'd like us to go next don't forget leave them in the comments and then we'll have a look and easy see enough for landing physics there we go there's one landing there as a matter of fact easy eight nine nine will be going uh, for us then foxtrot uh, to gate six through ten we just see the uh, uh aircraft there there's one coming in i think someone's having problems finding the gate back there That looks like a go around to me. Let's have a look. I'll hold short. Oh no, he did put it down. Okay, well done, mate. He did put it down. Okay, let's go and line up. Head to be traffic speed, but 74 Bravo lining up runway 06. nobody else coming so we're fine to just line up and wait once we hear runway vacated then we'll uh, clear the clear and go he's still on the runway look that's fine that's really that's worked out really really well actually and we're bang on time let's start the chrono easy in and out for vacating just like wait for him to maneuver off heading for traffic speed but 74 bravo taking off runway 06 we'll be going for the other terminal uh, for stand number uh, 16 and we're off here we go Positive climb, gear up. Auto pilot on. We're off. Okay, so we're now heading for the Gossam One Delta. Show you that in a second. I'm just going to come off the climb. Just, just going to tidy up. Take the speed brakes off. Auto brake off. Flat one. We'll move that in a second to flat two. Just going to. Don't think I put the lights on, did I? Never mind, never mind. Right, so just while we are... Hello, what's that? Autopilot's come off, why's that come off? Whoa. like I'm flying the plane at the minute and I'm not sure why there we go autopilots kicked back in whoa that was a bit freaky I think I've probably done something wrong there but never mind and getting back on the uh, the path whoa, that was really strange okay just while autopilot takes off I'll have a look at navigraph so this is probably because we've just gone wrong slightly but we're, we're on that Gossam one Delta and we've got to be between five and six thousand feet so we're climbing for that now and we'll stay at six thousand feet all the way to Gossam before we will start our climb up to flight level 240 which is our cruising altitude today um, yeah <laughs> not quite sure what happened there but we're on our way leg two here we go 
colleges about that. Very bizarre. So anyway, we're back on the track. At the airport is somewhere. Is that behind us or yeah, there's the airport there in the background look, right behind us. So all good. All good in the end. So we should now be back on the flight plan which we are. One zero one four Q and H, all good. And Keflavik is still offline, which is even better, so we don't have to worry too much. I'll just monitor Unicom one two two decimal eight all the way. Interesting one hour fifty one minutes. Looking good, clean. Hit six thousand feet, we'll stay at six thousand feet. There we go, seven four Bravo. Okay. Um, just so you can see that, I'm not sure you'll be able to. Let's have a quick look. So yep. Yeah. There's us on Vatsim, and there we are. Just taking that, got some one Delta departure, just moving, coming round. Probably head over Glasgow before turning northwest and making our run up over to Keflavik in Iceland. Leg two, Euro Tours. One hour 51 flight time, uh, we're off on time, so that's a bonus. I don't think there's anybody else around us at the minute. I'm just checking to see if there's anybody else going to Keflavik on Vatsim that I can see that could get in our way. It doesn't look as though there is, which is good, because I have had it where I've almost chased somebody else in. I've been Above them, with one of us has had to hold to allow the other one just time just to get in and uh, in Keflavik. So, just while the aircraft gets us up to, uh, I need to come off the plan, don't I? That'd help. We'll come back on the arc. that okay yeah, excuse me just jiggling about but I do have uh, kind of a set view that I do like just just helps so while we're doing that let's go back into Navigraph this is the new Navigraph uh, it's really good because the minute you pull in your actual flight plan from Simbrief it gives you most of the charts at the bottom it'll give you the stars and the SID what it won't do is give you the arrival which I've done but we'll be coming on, coming into Keflavik on the Baslu, uh, Baslu three Mike arrival. So we'll be coming in Baslu, which means at uh, Keflavik three eight two, we've got to be above flight level one five zero, but at Picus one three zero. So that's our profile down to three thousand feet at Sonax. And that 3,000 feet at Sonax is really important because at Sonax we'll start our descent for 2,200 feet to capture the ILS 10 miles out from Keflavik. So we'll make a right turn, capture the ILS 2,200 feet at Madak. Well, Madak actually, we've got to be 1,800 feet to capture the ILS on the glide slope. So 1,800 feet in runway 10 so this is an ILS approach straightforward but what I do find is the Phoenix doesn't always capture that glide slope so our decision now altitude or height 309 feet before 
we have to make a decision. If we can't see the runway, then we go around and the go around today, climb on runway track 104, so that's just in line with the runway. The D5.0, so five miles, take a left turn, a maximum of 210 knots knots onto 330 and climb to 3000 degrees and then expect vectoring by Keflavik approach. Um, obviously if there's nobody on we'll vector ourselves back in and we'll have another go but I'm hoping we'll capture it no problems we've just got to be aware of that 1800 feet uh, marker which we should be okay um, it should stick to the constraints in the aircraft um, it, one thing that is very good with the Phoenix is the VNAV it is excellent never never an issue never an issue with it so we're now just making our way to Glasgow that's Glasgow in front of us that you see there and then we'll start our northwest turn heading to Keflavik should be on the ground 1930 so about an hour and 40 from now let's wait and see it always changes <coughs> 2049 estimated time of arrival currently that will change it will come down as we move further um, but there you go so we, we leave Q and H on 1014 because we've not gone by 7000. Once we get by 7000, we'll turn them into to standard. Here's our northwesterly turn. Out, out towards the Atlantic. Crossing the Hebrides. And then making our uh, approach into Keflavik. It's a nice winter approach this. If ever you want to go and have a, a flight in the winter, Keflavik is lovely. Keflavik, Bergen, Tromso, you get the, the snow. Really worth worth having a look. Okay, so we're okay at the minute, there's nothing else come on. Sim uh fat sim. So we're all just. Oh, there you go, and you're not good. I'm just checking all and if there's any other aircraft around the same distance we are, but from different areas, just to make sure. But it looks all right actually. I think Keflavik is going to be quite quiet tonight, so it might just be us. Doesn't mean to say that people will be taking off, but it might be us. Right, we've now gone beyond 7,000, so let's go to standard, which we've done. And the aircraft will continue its climb now to flight level 240. As we go through 10,000 feet, we'll turn the lights off. Here we go, right. So, so I think what we can do now is let's go up. Turn the lights off. And the seatbelt signs off. That's it. We should be okay now. Got company message. Let me see what that company message may just be. Look, are we late? Don't think we are. Probably just a load sheet. Yep, yeah, load sheet. Let's just accept. We should have really accepted these on the ground. These are not the sort of thing you should be accepting in the air. You should have done this well before, but never mind. We've done it now. Ah, uh, dear. Right. And then when we get up to cruise altitude, we'll fill in our approach page. Really straightforward to do. Made even more straightforward by the Phoenix because it's in the electronic flight bag. Flight bag. And all the calculations are in there, um, which will give us our approach speeds and all the information we need. So let's sit back and enjoy the flight as we just make our way over the west coast of Scotland. Just making that right turn. Glasgow's over to our right. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oops. 
Glasgow, just in fact just behind us we come over it, but Glasgow there. And we'll got the Clyde. And we're just gonna make our way up down the Clyde, along the west coast, over the Atlantic, and hopefully arriving in Keflavik for around about uh, half past seven, not half past six at all, is it? Half past seven. Still climbing. As we can see, 14,000 feet has gone through. And we'll continue that climb nice and steady. Oh, and is that Keflavik I see just coming online? Oh, don't do that. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Not that it's a problem. But uh, it just means that you've got more work to do. All looking good at the moment. So, where's our top of descent? Let's just we go into our flight plan. I think it's, it's I always check the top of descent. So we're coming up for the top of climb, 24,000 feet in a second. Um, it's quite interesting. Yeah, that should be fine. So top of descent, the profile should be quite straightforward actually. So once we get we actually get by Basley before we even start to descend. Uh, three eight two, flight level two zero zero. Mm. Okay, just say above fifteen hundred. Picus seventeen hundred above the okay, so that's all right. We've got to be Sonax is the one I'm slightly worried about. Sonax 4213 D cell. I think Sonax is a bit high. Maddox, 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 1800 feet. Maddox, 1800 feet. That's the right profile. So actually, if we target 1800, we should stick to these. And the reason we will stick to these is if it's a uh, magenta asterisks next to it their constraints so the aircraft will automatically follow all of those constraints down so we shouldn't have to worry about it so when we're ready to descend if we program in uh, on here if we programmed in 1800 feet it should stick the profile all the way down so we should stick to uh, all of the constraints so we should be okay I'm not too worried about that at the moment okay, it's looking good in fact it's looking very good uh, our estimated time of arrival is coming down 1937 I still think by the time we get to cruise altitude it's just probably going to be around about 1930 but we've got crosswinds to contend with and they will turn into headwinds as we turn more westerly Quite strong as well, 41 knots up here. Did he? Did he? Did he? Yeah, so if you haven't seen our leg one, go and have a look at the, the first leg where we flew from Gatwick up to Edinburgh. So the, the plan is we're going to fly the Phoenix A320 to every European country. And technically there's only 44 countries but the UK is classed as one so England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and we're going to try and visit all of those countries um, but equally there are four dependencies as well so Isle of Man, Channel Islands, Faroe Islands and Gibraltar we will visit each one of the dependencies and Gibraltar will be a particularly tough um, tough landing I think never done it before won't be doing bats in for that one because it is quite complicated but that's where we that's what we'll be doing also we're just bearing in mind that there are some countries that actually don't even have their own airports so for example monaco uh, monaco does not have its own airport it uses nice coke Zur. so we'll use nice nice for that one same as vatican city uh, uses rome so we'll, we'll use rome there but where we can We'll be visiting airports in every one of the European countries, and this is leg two. So this is Scotland to Iceland. So today we'd have knocked off three different countries. If you want to 
keep track of us see where we're going next please like and subscribe to the channel uh, and leave a comment below where would you like to go next we will always go from wherever we land so next leg will go from Keflavik we'll go Keflavik to wherever so let us know where you'd like to go and uh, we'll have a look and see what we can do just going to check uh, yep just bear with I'm just making sure there's no messages coming through so we're on just going to check we are on Unicorn we should be on Unicorn 122 decimal 8 yeah it's fine absolutely fine no issues no issues at all thus far <laughs> he says okay all good and we're yeah, now just on the west coast of Scotland if we come out we not see too much there's the coastline just behind us that's the west coast going all the way up you're not going to see too much because it's dark but it's, it's the west coast um, I was talking to somebody earlier, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing the A380 Airbus. Um, I, have, I fly the Airbuses more than I do the Boeings, but I'm really looking forward just to trying out the uh, the 380, the big jet. Uh, anybody, I don't know if anybody got any recommendations for a good A330? I'm looking for an A330 to try next as well, I do like the A330. So we'll see should really try the Boeings but um, I, I don't know just prefer the uh, the Airbus always have done always have done right there's a bit of weather over Keflavik and Reykjavik it's not great um, we're probably just gonna skirt it but we'll have to keep an eye on what happens for that weather it's just slowly moving slowly moving eastward we could end up with it just sat over Keflavik and Reykjavik yeah let's just wait and see where that uh, yeah where that sits it's otherwise I think it's going to be clear skies all the way in I think we'll only get hit with the um, well looking at this we should only get hit with the weather as we enter our star Yep. Yeah, we'll be absolutely fine. Absolutely fine until we hit the uh, Basel three mic, and then could get could get a bit wet. Uh, it's quite low level cloud. Let's have a look at what the electronic flight flag says. Meta for arrival. Let's have a look. So, on the 13th at 17.30 Zulu, wind 090 degrees at 19 knots, gain into 29 knots, visibility is actually okay, but with rain, broken cloud at 2,600 feet, overcast 5,300 feet, temperature 11 degrees, dew point 8, Q&H 0992 at the moment, interesting. So it's not great weather, but it ain't bad either. So let's just see see what we get. There's not much to see on a night flight. That's the, the downside. You do have to just put up with the cockpit. Um, or myself as we, we cross we cross the Atlantic, North Atlantic. But what we'll try and do is we come out of uh, Keflavik at our next flight on our next leg of our Euro tour. Um, we'll do it in the daytime so again don't forget just leave it in the comments where you'd like to go and we'll have a look and see what we can do yeah, where we go? yeah look estimated time of arrival now is 1933 Zulu time so all been well should be on the ground just after half past seven that's likely to be a bit later than that by the time we uh, by the time we get there 
but going well so far so just now starting to leave Scotland behind and coming over the islands of the west coast not that you can see nothing there to see at the minute is there Scotland's actually behind us again you can't see too much there either but Coast of one of the islands. It's really uh, 24,000 feet. Just going to have a look at the pilots. There we are. Co pilot and pilot there. There is a way, but I still can't figure it out how to see co pilot in the sea. Is it an add on? Does anybody know? Let, can you let me know in the comments. I suspect it is. I suspect it's just an add-on that you um, you download, but I can't find it anywhere. But I've seen people with the co-pilot. He looks bored. I've got to be honest. He does look bored. But I have seen people with the co-pilot in the sea. I'd like to give it a go. Right. Don't forget, you can check out our other videos as well. Um, lots of European flights with the uh, British Airways Phoenix A320. We tend to use FSLTL if we're not on VATSIM and GSX. Mixed results with GSX. I'm still not convinced by their um, pushback tool. I think some of it is to do with my kind of knowledge and control of it. If I could just get a grip of that I think would be okay but um, yeah I, I, I just tend to use the EFB pushback it works well enough for me I know which way I'm facing nice and easy nice and straightforward I try and uh, yeah, try and stay off fats in when I'm using the GSX Pro because it tends to that's when it tends to go wrong you don't want to go upsetting anybody well So about an hour and a half, about an hour and a half to go, uh, it's not too bad, just a couple of things to point out, we've got, if you're new to the Phoenix or new to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, just something to point out, you'll notice that that is our path that we're following, yet the aeroplane is actually, nose is pointing at 285 degrees and the reason for that is there is a, a crosswind from a 184 which is over here at 54 knots now if we were to just aim directly for our target point we would be pushed off we'd be pushed off it and we'd actually end up going over here somewhere so the plane adjusts its nose so that it flies slightly into the wind to keep itself on the track it needs to keep on so we'll follow our route no problem because we're actually aimed just slightly to the left of it and this wind will keep us back on it's actually picking up a bit our ground speed is currently 443 knots our targeted airspeed 427 knots uh, currently flying at 0 0.705 Mach so just something to point out something to be aware of where the aircraft is pointing if it's pointing to the left or the right of your route the actual route the chances are that is purely because there's a crosswind it's just pushing you off up here on the top right what you see is gomup which is our next waypoint that's at 292 degrees 292 degrees to the slight to the left we're 87 nautical miles away from it and we should arrive at that waypoint at 18.20 and currently time is 18.08 18.08 and it's exactly the same on the other display here the other ND display here gone up 292 84 nautical miles 18.20 so we're about 11 minutes away 
uh, from from hitting that waypoint and that's it just really useful information to know right so let's go check our performance page again and this time we'll do our landing calculations so our arrival performance really important we get this right so we know we're runway 10 at Keflavik it's good I checked the Metar over there it is good hectopascal not 0.992 hectopascals wind 0 090 degrees at 19 knots that's 11 degrees here it is in metal um, we had a look at that let's just pull that information through now landing weight you can actually get from your flight plan and that is 62.2 for today so I'm going to write in there 62.2 our medium water break will need 2,106 meters absolutely no issue because this runway is quite a long runway so we're not going to have any problems we'll stop way before the end in fact that's on low auto break what's on medium auto break 1569 and maximum auto break is going to be 1557 so we'll go for low auto break and we'll stop 2,106 meters and I think it's uh, is it a 3,000 meter runway plenty plenty of spare there so what I'm gonna do go back in and I'm gonna pick up all of our metal for now uh, we will make changes uh, if we need to as we go along and if there is an 80s change so we know the wind is 090 at 19 knots we know it's plus 11 and we know Q and H is 0992 let's go back into the MCDU and what you do is you click performance don't activate the approach approach phase whatever you do that's for much closer nope previous phase there we go all the information is in here now remember I said our decision altitude from our plan was 309 feet so in the radio section we're going to put 309 if we can't see the runway at that point it's a go around that's it that's all there is to it our transition altitude is 7000 feet for Keflavik so our approach speed today will be 136 knots and our landing speed will be 131 knots uh, that will be taken care of by the aircraft but not going to have to worry too much so q and h at the moment is zero and we we'll keep checking this zero nine nine two we will keep checking it so we, there will be changes made as we go along it's 11 degrees it is wind zero nine zero at 19 not uh, degrees and that's it just leave it at that and our final approach is the ILS Yankee 10 arrival which we've checked actually makes sense and it does I have done that before where coming into Keflavik I chose the Zulu arrival and didn't check it and I was actually on Vatsim it took me a long way around for a shortcut uh, we ended up doing a big loop to come back onto the same track so you, and uh, I was on Vatsim. Thankfully uh, the controller was uh, quite chilled so it wasn't an issue but it could have been because there was one just behind me and who ended up going around. Not my fault I hasten to add but he did go around. So that's Edinburgh offline. Vatsim's quite busy over Europe tonight. Very busy in fact. is boa control whoa there's loads Heathrow is busy and Gatwick is really busy tonight interesting uh, it's gone a bit quieter at Edinburgh we've got like there's only two there now both taking off by the look no one's arrived it's taken off it actually 
actually looks like we're being chased. There's about half an hour behind us. There is another plane for Keflavik. It's not an issue. Plenty of time for us. Plenty of time. Yeah, okay, so estimated time of arrival still is about 7.34, that gives us an hour and 20 uh, flying time left, plenty of fuel, 5.8 tonnes, and we're at our cruise altitude, 240. Interesting. been disconnected from the voice server for some reason I don't know why but I'm back on there we go oh my God. we're back it doesn't matter we're back on Batsim so we're on 122.8 decimal eight. should anybody else be about we they're gonna hear us and we're gonna hear them that's the main thing uh, we're now out over the Atlantic Ocean a couple of hundred miles north of Northern Ireland and we'll start uh, very shortly to make a right turn uh, head in a northwesterly direction into Keflavik let's have another look at uh, so go back to here so we're on the Basley 3 mic arrival maximum of 250 knots below flight level 100 unless we're instructed by ATC now occasionally ATC will tell you to go speed up or stay at your speed till a certain point so we've got to expect that just in case they come on Vectoring may be used, so if it gets busy, they'll vector us in, or if they just want us to be, take a shortcut and be quicker, they'll they'll give us a vector in. It says here transition level by ATC, which is fine out here, but it won't be on the final approach, which we'll come to in a second. So if we go to the final, so bear in mind Sonax. Let's just remember Sonax. Got to be above 3,000 feet. And there is Sonax there, 3,000 feet, and then we descend to 2,200 feet by Keflavik 1-0. So 10 miles out, a maximum of 200 knots. We'll make a right turn to Maddox, and Maddox is going to be at 1,800 feet, and that's where we've got to capture the glide slope at Maddox. So we'll capture it at Maddox. 5.3 miles out and we should then follow the glide slope all the way in there are papi lights so we will see on our approach papi lights both side of the runway um, they're the red or white lights that tell you whether you're too low or too high what you're looking for is too red too white uh, that means you're on the correct glide slope coming in if you get three red or four red you're too low uh, if they're white three white or four white you're too high and obviously four red you're really low four white you're really high so just got to keep those uh, in mind straight in runway one zero transition level clearly says here seven thousand feet and here's that missed approach so Keflavik approach is our um, important radio radio dial-ins I can't remember the word I'm looking for there but that's the um, the numbers we need for all of the radios for Keflavik that's the key that's the localizer radio for the localizer our approach course is 104 degrees we need to be on 104 degrees as we come in Glide slope 1800 at Maddox, so that's what we, where we need to be, Maddox, and the height we need to be at, and our decision altitude of 309 feet. If we cannot see the runway, we then climb on the runway track of 104 degrees 
to D5.0, that's five miles out. Then we make a left turn, no more than 210 knots, onto 330 degrees, and we climb up to 3,000 feet. And we'll expect Keflavik approach to Vector is in. I'm just going to make a note in a second. Let's go back to the flight. There we go. What I'm going to do is while we're, we're in flight, I'm just going to make a note of the ATIS just in case it comes on. Decimal three. Here we go. We're making our turn now, heading northwest. Uh, it'll just be a direct approach to Iceland uh, before we join the Baslu Three Mike Star. So final is one one nine decimal one five zero. Tower is one one eight decimal three, and ground is one two one decimal nine so that's the frequency we we tune the radios to should keflavik come back online it's not online at the moment but that's what we'll be looking out for just keep my eye on that weather front it's just sitting off iceland it's it's moved and it has moved yep it's moved it's moved it's still just off the west coast of Iceland but it's now starting to cover Keflavik may have cleared by the time we get there I doubt it just looking now yeah, we're on our own there's nobody it's about an hour behind us brilliant okay shouldn't be any issues so if you just scroll to this part, um, this is leg two of our Euro tour. It's a series where we are flying around Europe. We're going to fly to every European country in the Phoenix A320. If those countries don't have an airport of their own, we'll fly to the nearest one. So for Monaco, we'll be flying into Nice, um, but we'll also be flying to the dependencies. So Faroe Islands, Isle of Man, Jersey. Um, Gibraltar which is a really challenging uh, approach we will be flying into all of those um, but we'll fly from the airport that we land in so our first leg was from Gatwick into Edinburgh so we've gone from England to Scotland our second leg which is this one which is from Edinburgh to Keflavik so Scotland to Iceland if you've got any ideas of where you want to go from Iceland anywhere in Europe uh, let us know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do and if you want to follow what we're up to keep tabs on which country we're in or where we're going next don't forget you can like and subscribe on our youtube channel that really helps us out supports the channel if you could do that right Oi connection lost the internet's a bit dodgy tonight I'm glad I'm not streaming this one live so estimated time of arrival now has come down 1927 so we're about an hour and five minutes away um, not doing too badly we were off 1940 that was in the flight time of 1 hour 51 so it's about right it's about right at the moment so yeah let's uh, let's keep going and see where we end up let's see if we can it's a bit like when you try and beat the sat nav isn't it let's try and beat the uh, the sat nav So this is sim update 11 um, one thing I have noticed straight away apart from the fact it was 21 gigabytes to download it was huge 
but the one thing that I have noticed straight away is that the um, FPS is, is far better and more stable even at the busier airports um, before I was possibly and I'm, I've got a uh, RTX 3080 everything on ultra I was getting sort of anything up to just kind of 38 39 um, in Gatwick where previously it was dropping down to about 26 24 so th something's happened with the frames per second plus Nvidia have just done their uh, a latest update but the sim 11 seems to be stable it seems to be okay I've not had any crash to desktop touch wood yet I was getting some under the old sim update um, not sure what it was in my community file that was causing that I've removed a lot of stuff from it a lot so I've got kind of got the bare bones in there really but uh, yeah let's wait and see let's wait and see it's nice doing okay this is the, the one of the bad things about flying over water at night there isn't much to see you don't see anything so if we went outside I can see can you see the moons the moon out the moon's not even out look no moon new moon stars but there's nothing to see down there all you can see is flashing light of our aeroplane as we make our way out of the sea to the Catholic dark and eerie very dark and eerie so making good time we've now got more of a tailwind than a crosswind and that's quite a hefty one 79 knots you can see that so there we go that tailwind here 176 degrees that's 79 knots which is why we've still got a face slightly to the left of the direction we're traveling in because if we didn't we'd get pushed off off our track and we'd end up wide of our um, next waypoint which is Brecky 327 degrees 327 degrees in 385 nautical miles we'll be there at 1930 so actually there aren't many more um, waypoints it's just a clear run straight there now straight there to Brecky and then we'll be on the start of the standard arrival for Keflavik I haven't even got any jazzy music I can play here. But never mind. Here we go. Let's just keep going. Hoping I can get a good landing this time. I did a bit of a Ryanair on the leg one. Coming into Edinburgh it was a bit of a hard landing. So let's hope we can get a good landing this time round. And uh, Well, it would be nice to butter it. I haven't buttered the Phoenix. I have buttered in the F, uh, fly by wire, not in the Phoenix. And I don't know why. But uh, let's see what happens. So, about a third of the way, just under. We should start to eat the miles now probably an hour and we should be on the ground in uh, in Keflavik it isn't looking great I've got to be honest I'm keeping an eye on the weather because we are using live weather and there's a lot of showers by the look of it although it's patchy it is very patchy there's a bit in the middle that yeah that could be over the top of Keflavik by the time we get there westerly direction and that says we just sit here now in northwesterly direction for the foreseeable 
we are now chasing for now been chased so we've got where did you come from Manchester the Echo Golf Golf Delta where have you come from let's have a look Echo Golf Golf Delta Bista Airfield okay interesting Bista Airfield so we've got a couple of uh, flights just behind us who are also coming into Keflavik could make um, we should uh, well we should be there before them about half an hour but there is one EG now Echo Golf Golf Delta is Bristol He's got 674 miles to go. One parallel to us, 100 miles away, is 590 miles to go. And we've got 489 miles to go, so we we should should be fine. We're 100 miles ahead of him. Um, it looks like he's taking a longer route from Manchester. He's just going straight straight over the top of um, Scotland off the northwesterly point and he's just heading for the eastern tip of Iceland to then turn I think probably the same star that we're we're heading on should get there probably about half an hour before him it's got 582 what have we got 582 we've got 481 so we're 101 miles ahead let's hope we can uh, we can keep going and beat him to it other one it's interesting because you can watch their speeds I'll show you let me show you so we've got this chap here he's traveling at 500 sorry no he's not 479 knots he's got 582 nautical miles to go going into Keflavik there's another one behind him which we don't have to worry about 469 knots um, come from Bristol he's got 661 nautical miles to go not going to worry too much so and here is us keep traveling at 499 knots with 475 nautical miles to go so we're actually traveling faster anyway and I think it's because of that tailwind about 20 knots an hour faster so you, the gap should actually start to grow never mind anything else so I'm not overly worried we're doing all right we haven't crashed yet which is always a good sign see that TikTok. What's everyone having for the dinner? I'm having jacket tea, tea. Bit of cheese. Some coleslaw. Some garlic bread. Ah! Have a look. It's become a standing joke in our house now. If anybody asks what we're having for tea, it always has to end in garlic bread. Ah! Don't know why, but anyway. I do like TikTok waste away lots of hours on TikTok for some reason but never mind <laughs> okay it's going to be quite a flat flight this one I think I don't think there's going to be any issue there's no turbulence we're steady away um, speed is hanging steady at 0 0.702 Mac plenty of fuel in the tank 5.1 tons the route is sticking to the route no problems doesn't seem to be any issues hmm. 
keep my arm careful of it because no my luck as we get closer it'll come back online that's the only thing I've just got to watch I've had that before where just as I've started my descent they've come online and you get a message contact me but if, you, if you've not tried Vatsim definitely recommend knowing your plane well first don't just jump on Vatsim get to know your aircraft get to know how it handles get to know how to bring it into land you know get to know how to to vector because you know if the ATC starts vectoring you with speed and height you've got to be able to respond quickly but once you can do that sign up on Batsim you can always log in as an observer you don't have to uh, log in and fly so if you log in as an observer on an airport you won't be seen so you can actually take off from that airport you can listen into all of the transmissions and you can take off from that airport in between nobody will see you but you can practice your routine you can practice asking for your clearance your push and start permissions your, your taxi in instructions um, it's a really good way to start but just make sure you log in as an observer another great resource is the learning center on uh, my vatsim now the reason that's a good resource is it actually gives you a script it shows you this is how to request clearance this is how to request push and start this is how to uh, request taxi and it gives you examples of of the conversation ready to hear and always handy what i've got in front of me is always a pen and a book a bit of paper so i can write down all of the instructions quickly um, because they do come quickly but don't be afraid to ask them to repeat just say sorry didn't catch that um, most people nine times out of ten will be more than happy to help you out and there is I'm now just going to find his YouTube He's normally on Keflavik or the Faroe Islands. Josh the controller, I think it's called. Just bear with, let me find his YouTube channel. Yeah, Josh the controller on uh, YouTube. It's a lad from Norway, but he often is on Keflavik or Faroe Islands and great for newbies because he'll talk you through he's very patient it's very quiet he will talk you through what to do what to say and offer you the support no pressure there's a lot less pressure check out his youtube cha youtube channel josh the controller there was one day last year i was actually doing a um a flight on vatsim and i hadn't realized but i ended up on his youtube stream because he was controlling me at uh, Keflavik uh, to Edinburgh and I couldn't actually find my oceanic clearance and he helped me get my oceanic clearance so you know people are there to help so that's him learning center and Josh the controller if you want somewhere quiet to practice look out for him online at uh, Keflavik and Faroe Islands and also check his discord out he does often use his discord to say where he'll where he'll be um, but a great experience because there's no pressure if you make a mistake it doesn't matter because it's quiet and he'll talk you through what to do and what to say so I, I was impressed with him definitely worth a look right back to it let's check the engines check everything is okay so what you can see here on the ECAM, everything is good. So engines absolutely fine. Temperature is good. Fuel on board 4.9 kilos, uh, almost halfway. So that's probably about right. We've got plenty. There's our engines. And our air, gross weight, no problem there. Yeah, all good, all good. But it is worth keep coming down and checking these. Let's just go back to our um, memo here. Let's just 
Have we had any change? So this was at 1830 Zulu name. So we have had a slight change. It would be worth us just checking. So it's now 110. Oh, it's getting windy. Ooh. 110 at 41 knots. Gusting 55. Blimey. Rain. Scattered showers at 017. Broken cloud 023. Overcast 053. Still plus 11. QNH is still 0. Oh no, it's gone down. 0990. But that wind shot up because it was 090 at 19 earlier so let's go back into here uh, we can change our Q&H because we now know it's 0990 and again we just keep checking we'll keep changing it 110 at 41 that's that's heavy blimey that's going to be difficult that will be a very difficult landing. Wow. Okay. We're not going to check it out. So, top of descent just after Brecky, but we've got quite a few miles to go yet. 270 before we get to Brecky, and then another 59 before the top of descent. So, we're okay. And then we'll be targeting. 1800 zero, zero, feet but we've got plenty of time not even halfway yet yeah that wind we've got certainly got a tailwind pushing us it's now 1926 Zulu that is interesting miles of Brecky however we're now coming up to the halfway point so we're well over the ocean at the minute northwest still and of Brecky before descending into Baslu and at the start of our um, start of our descent into uh, rainy Keflavik just kind of hoping by the time we get there that rain is moved but it actually looks like it's just going to sit over the top it's not looking great it's not looking great at all can't be helped we'll just have to manage what we get yeah I'm not looking <laughs> I'm really not looking forward to this landing something tells me this won't be buttered Forty-two, so about fifty minutes. What have we got to be on the ground? Uh, top of descent. Eighteen twenty. So what are we on now? Eighteen forty-two. So we've still got quite a bit of time before we we hit uh, Brecky. Nineteen twenty. So we've got about forty minutes before top of descent. Just just under forty minutes, about seven, uh, thirty-seven minutes. Now hit the top of descent. It'll be a very quick descent if that is the case to be on the ground. In it's now saying we'll be on the ground at nineteen twenty-six. So I'm not not convinced by some of these timings, but let's worry. we'll worry about that later. We'll work through it. It'll be good. All will be good. It's not, it's not, there's not a lot I can do about it. I'm sure, I'm not worried. I'm not worried yet. Mm. Maybe I am a little bit. I'm lying. Okay, well, top of descent 1920, so we just need to keep our eye on 1920 for the top of descent. But 
It's now 18.44. Still got about 36 minutes before we hit the top of descent. We have got a bit of a tailwind. It's speeding us up. And I suspect the other flights coming into Keflavik from uh, just to the east of us are battling a little bit against. They'll have a, more of a crosswind than they will a tailwind. So I suspect they're battling that. As we get closer to Iceland and move more westerly, we're going to be fighting it. But it does make landing interesting. In fact, it makes it very interesting. The wind is 110 degrees. And we're coming in at 104 degrees. So it's going to come across us slightly, but it is going to make... That's going to be a quick landing. Blimey. We've got to come in at, what was that, 131? Ooh. Wow. Let's wait and see. I'm not convinced. Okay. I think it's going to be hairy. We ain't going to. Uh, no way are we going to put this, but we'll try. I shall try. Right. Okay. So halfway there just beyond making steady progress Edinburgh to Keflavik this is leg two of our Euro tours series where we try and visit every European city, uh, country there is plus some dependencies in all in all we think there's 49 that we'll be visiting some won't have their own airport which is fine um, Monaco for example so we will land at Nice Côte d'Azur but where we can we'll be using a major airport in those countries so every European country will be visited some will be live some will be recorded uh, some will be on VATSIM some won't but we'll be using FSL TL and we will be using GSX Pro uh, throughout this series so don't forget like and subscribe to keep a track on where we are where we're going next and if you'd like us to visit a particular country leave a message in the comments and we'll see what we can do good 4.5 tons left um, plenty to get us down and give us a little bit extra at the other end should we need it now if we've got that go around just in case that wind does kick up we've got that alternative engines looking good engine all clean yeah see if we can get this down come on nineteen twenty six Zulu okay just under forty minutes thing I probably will do is leave Finland to Christmas we'll do a Father Christmas flight and visit Rovaniemi in Finland I think um, 
but open to any other suggestions any country in Europe we've only ticked off three which is England Scotland at the end of this flight will be Iceland we will fly from Keflavik to another European country in our next video uh, any ideas on where you'd like to go let me know put a message in the comments and who knows we may choose that country to visit next while we're along the way if there's anything in particular you want to have a look at anything you want me to show you from setting up the MCDU using GSX Pro FSLTL uh, cold and dark let us know and more than happy to put a video together uh, for you help the channel you can like and subscribe but don't forget share it let everybody else know and get them involved that'd be good too so we are going to use the Phoenix for for our flights around Europe um, I've had a few issues with uh, fly-by wire a320 just it seems to be one of the programs in community that caused me a few problems with the last sim update although we're now on sim update 11 so I may give it another go um, it's a shame because I do like the uh, the fly-by wire a320 it's a cracking job the developers are doing and I'm really looking forward to the a380 and the big white body of the want to fly the uh, a long haul flight um, after we've done this one we may do may do kind of long haul series rather than just um, just European series but let's focus on the Europe series first let's do complete that that's going to keep us busy for quite a while I would imagine and then when the heavies come out let's have a look at the heavy division Um, for those new to VATSIM if you want me to uh, talk you through setting up VATSIM I can do that uh, we'll also have a look at use of charts in every flight so we can show you the Navigraph charts but if you sign up for VATSIM you do get access to ChartFox which is free uh, that gives you free charts so SIDS, STARS, APPROACH, AIRPORT um, looks like they're all there and you can download them as a PDF so you can print them and, and use them so if your favorite airports if you want to keep your charts and have paper charts then you can do so and that's through ChartFox so all you need to do for that is sign up at VATSIM which is free VATSIM.net sign up for an account And then you'll get access to uh, lots of different resources to help you with the flight planning lots of resources in terms of charts also there's a forum so you can get some support and if you're interested in become a controller do you want to become a controller have a look um, they can basically sign you up for some training and you sign up for the division in which you live in so I've signed up for vatsim.uk or vatsim UK um, controller training but there is a very very long queue so don't expect that you're going to sign up for the training and then you're going to get to be a controller immediately that won't happen um, I think the current wait time is something like six months you'll be waiting longer than that all good fun and another skill to learn as well so I'm looking looking forward to getting on that but uh, it's not quick it's not a quick process at all gonna have to get some better music because otherwise you're gonna listen to me singing so 30 minutes now let's have a look see where our top descent comes in It is there top of descent so about 160 miles to go to Brecky just under and then between Brecky and our next waypoint is our top of descent we'll 
follow our uh, star before we make a right hand sharp right hand turn into the airport at Keflavik so we're all right for, for a while we can still stay where we are I'm just gonna check that weather front and it is still sat there now uh, it has moved definitely moved whoops you don't want to have a graph there you go so this big bank of cloud that you can see here is definitely moving east to west it's now sat over Keflavik but there is a big hole in the middle it's very patchy so we might just get away with a weather window here if not we have got some uh, showers some heavy showers just around that center and this is us here if I show you there we are so we're just southeast of the lower edge of that weather front so yeah it's going to be interesting as I say I'm just kind of hoping that it moves and we end up with just a gap in the weather to to help us get it down without having to worry too much but uh, let's wait and see let's wait and see so just check our progress on Navigraph yeah making good progress now Track 327, and that you can see that wind has now started to come behind us more. So it's almost put that gap between the yellow marker and the direction we're facing to the green marker and the direction we're travelling in has narrowed. So we're getting a, a good tailwind here, which is helping us and hopefully start to bring our estimated time of arrival down a bit further. Uh, it's still saying 1926 my money's on 1940 by the time cause we always tend to slow down and go too slow um, 1940 is usually time on the ground but making good progress here as we just cross I'm actually in um, Shanik Oceanic airspace at the minute but there's nobody on we are on I have checked that we are on Unicom There is nobody on Reykjavik at the moment, so that is good. I don't want anybody on Reykjavik at the minute. It just complicates everything. 261 nautical miles to go. And we've made good time compared to the, uh, the other plane that came out of Manchester. That's now taken even longer. It's got 376 nautical miles against our 253, so we've opened up a nice gap there. So we should be uh, we should be well on the ground and probably probably on stand just as he starts his star. So yeah, happy with that. And if we take the whole length of the runway, I think might get be able to get off on echo but i think we're more likely to get off on november take a left turn just follow november all the way around into the terminal building looking at this so let's have a look see there's runway one zero runway 10 there 3065 meters we get slowed down enough to come off at echo which you can see there we'll come off at echo and just make our way along echo non-november and then we'll park at the the terminal building if not we'll continue to the end of the runway we'll come off left on november two take november three and november four and park at the runway there so either either way i think we're we're okay it will depend on how we get bright when there's no well I'll be amazed if we hit Charlie 
so I think it's well we're not even going to get to Charlie are we? because the runway goes that way Charlie doesn't continue because it's hexed so it's not in use you can't go that way so it is going to be an echo on November um, leaving the runway so that's not a problem that's not a problem at all we'll be there in no time still making a steady headway towards Brecky. Should be there at 1912, 109 nautical miles to go. So, doing well. Still. This bit's the easy bit, to be fair. It's the next bit. It is the next bit. Let's just refresh that page and just see what's going on. Yeah, all good. There's nobody else I can see heading there, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, we have got one. Yeah, yeah, miles away. 621 nautical miles. We're going to get there way before. Sorry, I'm just checking Vatsim just to make sure that there is nobody else. But we, we've only got 237 nautical miles to go. We should be absolutely fine. But I think we're going to be coming through that pea soup. Um, I can't see where that pea soup is at the minute in terms of height. So let's go back to our electronic flight bag. Let's just refresh it. That's our latest update. So it's still 18.30 Zulu time, so it's only half an hour ago. Yeah, 110 at 41 plus 11. QNH 0990, we can see there it's raining, visibility 6,000 feet, it is raining, the scattered clouds at 017, broken clouds at 023, so 1,700 feet scattered clouds, shower, scattered clouds, broken clouds at 023, so we'll be coming through some thick cloud, but as we descend, um, it'll be clear, it's, it's not going to be an issue. I think we're going to be just fine. Zero nine zero one one zero at forty one, and landed speed one hundred and thirty one knots, ILS Yankee ten. Let's just double check. Let's go to the plan. So it's on here. Just turn the knob to plan. What that does is it allows you to scroll through your flight plan. There's the descent just before Bagley. Just make sure it looks sensible, which it does, as you can see. Make our turn at Sonax. Turn again then to Maddox before 010. Not a problem with that at all. Let's go back to our arc. Yeah. It's all looking pretty good. Not bad for leg two, but we've got to get on the ground yet. That's the hard bit. This is the easy bit. Getting up and staying up. Getting the bird down. That's the hard bit. Ooh. Steady, it's just really steady. It's quite quite quiet on that sim up in Iceland today. It can be a bit hit and miss, kind of a few taken off. Um, there's not that many go and land there, but it is one of the quieter airports. So if you you're just starting out on that sim, um, it's quite a good airport to, to use. That's why I use um, Edinburgh as well. Um, or, or Glasgow. Uh, they can be kind of quieter and people have got a bit more time just to help you uh, if you get stuck. So give it a go. Um, as I say, more than happy to do a video on VATSIM getting set up. Uh, we're currently on VATSIM but we're on Unicom, so we're on 122 decimal 8 because um, there is no controller at this moment.
miles we've got to go. So 192 nautical miles, not too far now, making good headway. Still expected to be on the ground, 1926, it's 1904 now. I'd still be amazed if that, that happens, but that's what we'll work to. Uh, once we hit that top of descent, we'll start to uh, make our descent down to catch the ILS Maddox at 1800 feet. Hopefully the aircraft will just control all of it. Um, I'll program that in here now. I can go down to a thousand and then click the side of it so it allows me to go up in hundreds. And if I just put 1800 in there, don't do anything. Just have it there prepped. When I'm ready, click the button and the plane will start to descend. But I'm not going to do anything till I see my descent arrow come here, which is that slight downward arrow. So but we're all prepped, ready to go. Uh, happy with that. So 53 nautical miles now from Brecky, should arrive 1912, so six minutes from now, and then shortly after that uh, we'll start our descent into a rainy Keflavik. Never visited Keflavik, but it's one place I really would like to visit. And as we as we start our descent, we'll start to to get ready um, in terms of arming um, the speed brakes start to work the flaps um, and prep for landing get the lights so when we hit 10,000 feet like level 010 we'll turn the landing lights on uh, seatbelt sign on and prepare for landing so far so good those interested I will leave a link in the description to Josh the controllers uh, YouTube um, go over have a look um, join his discord so that when he is on uh, line in Keflavik or Faroe Islands uh, you can you can join and have quite a relaxed batsim experience um, it's all for beginners everyone's there to help each other so certainly one to look out for. Another good one to look out for is on Jersey. There's a group that do the, the Jersey uh, tower and ground. Again, very supportive, very understanding and very patient. So well worth a look too. So we're we got left 175 nautical miles to go. Good time, just probably about 50 nautical miles southwest of that big bank of cloud. And we can't see it because it is so dark. Oh, it is quite misty here. I've got mist. I'm just going to go and check for ice on the panels. Uh, in there that's saying I might just put wing and engine anti ice on just for a bit because we are going to be coming through some cloud in the next 20 minutes <clears throat> the last thing we need is a failure and end up end up crashing at this stage please no CTDs no CTDs if you like what you're seeing don't forget like and subscribe um, 
keep up to date with where we are where we're going next on our euro tours and remember we will be going on our next leg from iceland and if you've got an idea of where you'd like us to fly to drop it in the comments and we'll see what we can do There's Brecky coming in, 20 miles away. <clears throat> we'll see the top of descent marker start to come in over here in a second. After Brecky. And we'll take our descent into Keflavik. We're now just coming into that bank of rain. Uh, just ahead of us. I think it's going to be uh, going to be quite bounce as we go through to I'm going to just put this fashion seatbelt signs on just because I'm going to possibly see some turbulence here I'm not sure but one thing we haven't got yet is the weather in the radar uh, that, that is supposed to be coming it's not just not there yet so that'll be good when it's there. We'll be able to uh, able to see the weather actually in the navigation display, the ND. And as you can see, ILS Yankee 10. We'll be starting our approach onto the star. At Baslu, Baslu 3 Mike. Just can't quite see yet. We're not quite on the map. Not yet, I'm not very far off there. No, not far off. Just coming over Brecky now. We've got to then make our way. Must be at the Kilo Foxtrot 382, we've got to be above 1500 feet, flight level 150. So it's not going to be a, a steep descent. So no, it's detected, that's good. Let's turn them off then. There's a fault? What do you mean there's a fault? Anti ice is gone, that's better. We certainly won't be landing with the anti ice on or the packs on. Seat belts are on. There's our top of descent just coming in there. 60 miles just under. It's now saying 1925, so it should be on the ground in about 15 minutes. I still think that is generous. My estimation of that is probably closer to 1940 Zulu time before we uh, before we arrive doing well but we are just on the edge of that that weather front um, and now just going into it according to the bats in map just short of it it's really strange because it's like a it's almost like a a donut in the middle it just looks like there isn't anything but it's just sitting right on top of Keflavik at the minute strange really strange keeping our eye out for the top of descent marker once that top of descent marker comes in then well, onto a flight computer we will then pull it or push the altitude in and we'll start our descent down to uh, 1800 feet where hopefully we'll capture the glide slope that's the plan Cruise flight level 240 held that quite nicely. Uh, tailwind now of 85 knots. Wow, 
So uh, ground speed is 512 knots, indicated airspeed 420. Wow, wow, wow. That's given us a fair old push. Take that though. Take that. It's not slowed us down. It's better than a headwind, that's for certain. So there's now just below us. Let's have a look. We should be in here. Look, we're in the cloud. Clouds are right below us. I love the effect of the, uh, the light the strobe. Oh, it's brilliant. Really well done. Really well done. We're all involved. Uh, can't be far away. No, there we go. 30 miles. Top of descent. Which is just prior to Basley, which is the start of the star. Nice and calm, let's keep it calm as we get down. There's no VATS in, so just before we start our descent we will make a call on VATS in, just so everybody is aware. But no need to do it at the minute. Just let traffic know. And if we need to, there is a hold at Picus. So if we do need to lose any altitude, it's a right hand hold. That'll just give us a bit of time to get down. As long as we are at or above flight level 130 by Picus, we're okay. But if we're if we're too high by that point, I can enter the hold just to bring us down and get us back on the profile, so that we can hit Maddox at 1800 feet. You can see nicely the top of descent, 20 nautical miles out now. That's that top of descent marker. And there's Basley. And here is the first constraint coming in. Got to be above flight level 150, which won't be an issue uh, at this point here. No speed constraint, which is useful. Okay. Don't have to do any call yet. Once we're up here, I'll, what I'll do is I'll start the descent and just tell everybody we're inbound Basley on the Basley 3 mic arrival and that we are descending for flight level 1800 feet by Maddox. So just let everybody know. Probably overshare, don't care really, as long as people know. That's the main thing. 10 miles out. At the moment, we are on our own. There is nobody else around us, which is good. <coughs> Shouldn't have any issues, but you never know. If people start taking off from Keflavik. It can cause them a few problems if they're not aware of what we're doing. So uh, we will let them know. We have got TCAS enabled. So again, not worried about that. He says. No, I didn't, but I have now. a couple of miles away from anybody so it wasn't a problem but we should really have had that that armed right, here we go top of descent coming in nicely once we're there once we get our nose there we'll start our descent Keflavik traffic speedbird 74 bravo inbound Baslu on the Basley 3 mic arrival uh, just starting our descent there we go nobody's on we're starting our descent there is no traffic at Keflavik so that's okay everyone's monitoring 
starting to come down nicely following the profile bearing in mind that yeah, we're now at Basley we've got to be at above or at flight level 150 by Kilo Foxtrot 382 which I don't see has been too much of an issue if I'm perfectly honest it looks like we're going to do it Looks like we are. We're an hour thirty is that thirty-nine in I think? So all good, twenty-three thousand. So we're targeting one thousand eight hundred feet. Next call will be as we uh, start our approach and then once we're established on the ILS we'll let everybody know. Yeah, connection lost. Always does this. No idea why. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. Here we go. This is the exciting bit. I always find this is the exciting bit of the flight. have got our seatbelt sign on already just because I was expecting a bit of turbulence but that hasn't materialized our lights we will not turn our lights on until 10,000 feet once we're at 10,000 feet the lights will come on and the lights will then stay on uh, all the way into landing just a um, standard operating procedure and our gear we'll put the gear down probably about five miles uh, from touchdown once we're established on the ILS so, just do a checklist just to make sure. Oh, that's just the internet. Our internet's rubbish. Check. Okay, just let's do one final check of. Let's refresh this just to make sure. Has anything changed? Yeah, it's at 700. It's now changed. It's 110 at 32 knots. Gusting 44. Uh, it's plus 10, and the Q and H is 0991. Good job, we checked. Let's go back into our performance page. Oh, here we go. So, uh, 0991, Q and H. Temperature, go away. 10. Wind 110 at 32 knots, but it is gusting, so we just need to be aware of that. It is gusting. We might need more drag. Let's just tell you what we're going to do. I'm just going to put the speed brakes out. <clears throat> just for a little while. Just to make sure that we do actually... this side to land this is the good, it's a good bit because you can actually put um, these operate independently of each other so you can you can change it it's great I don't want to be on planet mode that's the mode I want to be on so 15,000 picus Ooh, it's gonna be close you know Five thousand feet by one eight seven. Good luck with that. <clears throat> Having said that, we've got the speed brakes fully armed and fully deployed. So actually, that might well be the case. We might just do it. Put the landing system on. So nice and steady. Sending well still. Yeah, so we're now saying 1928 for our arrival. No surprise. <clears throat> it'll be by the time we finish, it'll be closer to 1940 before we get off this runway. 
guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay, we're on green dot. We're doing all right. We are doing all right. We are slowing down nicely. Just make sure there's nobody on at Keflavik, and there isn't. We're okay. What was that? Ice detected. Woohoo! Kel surprise. Right, ice. Wing ice. Fault go off, please. There we go. Speed brake is armed. It's not anymore. Should have slowed us down nicely. It's because we're coming through the uh, coming through the clouds. So that's the good thing about the A320. It does pre-warn you when there is ice about. So targeting below 6,000 feet. It's going to be close, you know. I've got to be at 3,000 at Sonax. Ooh, this is going to be tight. I don't like this. Just slows down a little bit. Just speed break out. Just conscious, there's the speed brake back. Let's go back up the top. I'm going to put the lights on. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Cross check on. Let's call the cabin crew. And we're starting our approach. So, about 12 miles to go to lose 3,000 feet. 1928 minute and a half. Should, should lose that. We should lose that. And our magenta diamonds are starting to show as we get closer to the runway to pick up the ILS. <clears throat> Let's not forget our missed approach. Uh, we've got to climb 3,000 feet, so we'll change it on here once we've captured the ILS, just so we know where we are. I'll let everybody else know what we're doing in a second. We're not on final approach yet, so I don't have to worry too much because we've got to get to Sonax first. So, Sonax is two waypoints ahead we've got to be at 3,000 feet or more got to be below 6,000 feet at our next waypoint it's going to be close but we are we're getting there we've got seven and a half miles to lose 1,600 feet but the aircraft should should find our glide slope for us we shouldn't have to worry too much it should just find it I'm hopeful that it will Coming up for five nautical miles, and we've got to lose 1,100 feet. 1928, below 7,000, so we can change our Q&H, and we know that it is zero nine nine one. <coughs> there we go. And we're below 6,000 feet, so that's good. And we've got to be 3,000 feet or more. And we start to descend more. Below 6,000 feet. Let's go into here. Let's go to performance. Activate the approach phase, which we can do start to slow down now okay, we should be at 220 knots by Sonax so we'll make a slight left and then we'll make our right turn swinging in for the airport which is over to our right somewhere so we won't be able to see that through the mist it's over here but definitely won't see much of that tonight 
ice not detected, so let's turn these off. Just keep an eye on that because we are coming through the glade and it is a bit cold. So as I say, almost over, second leg of our European tour. Two down, I think it's about 48 to go. So that's three countries we've done already. We've done England, Scotland, and now, if we get this down, Iceland. Um, have a look in the comments. Tell me, where would you like to go next? What would you like to see? But we will be going from Keflavik. That's the thing to remember. We do take off from uh, the place that we land. It is Keflavik we will be uh, flying from. But let me know, where do we go from next? Where to go to next, I should say. <clears throat> so, magenta dot coming in for height. We're almost at the right height. That's coming down and we should start to see the Regenta dot move across to the right as we make our turn into Keflavik. And as we do, I'll click the approach phase in. What I'm going to do is arm speed brake, auto brake, low. Thank you. Approach fade is on. A bit below the glide slope here, not below what's going on, but that's okay because we've got to be Maddox 1800 feet. So I think we're okay. You see the magenta dot coming across now as we line up with the runway. We should start to come down as we capture the ILS. Keflavik traffic, Speedbird 74 Bravo on final. Here we go captured it. It's a lot of wind. Flaps two. Flaps three. Signs are on. I thought they were on already, but they weren't clearly. Flaps full. I can't even see the airport at the minute, so this is where we've got to be careful. If it's minimums and we can't see, we're going around. Landing gear down. Captured it, so I'm going to put that up to 3,000 ready just in case. There's the air, there it is. Whew. We're there, we're there, we're there. It's there, look. <clears throat> but we have got one hell of a crosswind. Welcome to a very rainy Keflavik. Absolutely pouring down. Let's hope we get down in one piece. Runway 10. So Keflavik traffic. Speedbird 74 Bravo. Short final for runway 10. Got the papi lights. We've got two red, two white. Having a fight to keep this wind. Oof. It's a heavy. Don't you dare crash on me. No, it's that stuttered. Hundred above. Hundred above minimums. We're going for this, by the way. Regardless, we're going. Minimum. Continue. going. 
Come on. Come on. Come on. Continue. Come on. Continue. 50, 30, 20. We're down. We're down. We're down. We're down. We're down. <laughs> Watch what you're doing. Don't get too excited. Got to get off the runway, yeah. Uh, there we go. Welcome to Keflavik. It is very wet. Very wet. Clear those off. Try and get us off the runway. So what we're going to do, we're going to come off at Echo, which is just up here. Come off at Echo. Did well there. Really well, actually, to get down. I didn't think we were going to get down as smoothly as we did. know in a second that we've been able to do that and we've got off the runway there we go we'll leave our lights on I think all the way because whoa where are you going that's something else I've noticed with the Phoenix there's a lot of understeer or oversteer I can't blame the wind on that Keflavik traffic, speedbird 74 Bravo, runway vacated, uh, taxiing, Echo, November to terminal. Ground spoilers, let's tidy up, put the uh, flaps back, auto brake off. Am I going left here? I believe so. It's not quite what I wanted to do. Look at that. I can't even turn the aircraft. I'm fully turning. I have no idea why I've got the stick fully to the left. How bizarre is that? Never mind. Never mind. Now it's gone to the right. Is it going to get me back on there? Thank you no idea what was going on there apologies sorry to ground as well because they won't be having a very good time of it <coughs> right so we can I think let's turn in here look at that still won't turn look that is nuts Don't tell me that's the wind. Don't believe that. I'm not having that. No way am I buying that that's the wind. That is ridiculous. It's genuinely fighting to come. Look, it's now going the other way. That is really mad. What's that about? Okay. Let's turn in here. Oh, on that one, clearly. Oh, God. oh my god. Okay, do you know what? I'm not too worried. We're going in here. And I've got the nose wheel going fully left. And we're not even turning. Oh, never mind. Look, look, it's now turning of its own accord. Okay, well, let's go in, in here. <coughs> yeah, we're going in on the right. Don't know why, but there you go. Welcome to Keflavik. That was bonkers. Don't know what was going on with it. That was crazy. Just lost all steering. Anyway, never mind. So, let's go up. Uh, let's turn the lights off. 
We should really have turned them off before we uh, made our turn, but I'm glad I didn't because I wouldn't have seen where we were going. Seat belts off. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to. I will. Okay. Turn those off. Turn those off. Turn those off. I know. I know. I shouldn't do that, but never mind. And engine one. Engine two. Everything off. And there you go. Made it to Keflavik, round two, leg two of our journey. Don't forget, like and subscribe, and put in the comments where you'd like to see us fly to next time. Until then, goodbye.